Hi guys, Laura the Upper Goddess, and I just got home from work. As you can see, it's yoga night, and I am going to whip up a meatloaf. And um, I wanted to show you because there's a lot of bad meatloafs, you know, and my kids didn't even really like it much when I made it when they were little, but now they make it themselves. So um, I think the worst meatloaf is one that's cooked in a bread pan. <sighs> my meatloaf is so good. But I'm going to show you how to put it together. And one of the main things people probably do when they make meatloaf is not put enough salt on it. And what I do is, see how I got the meat all spread out here in this bowl? I'd say I got about two and a half pounds of meat. Well, when I salt it, I like salt every part of this meat, like that's showing. And like this part's a little bit thicker, so I'll put a little bit more salt there. And I don't think I've ever made meatloaf that didn't have enough salt on it. And for the pepper, I just go like this. I take the cover right off. It's quicker. So my rule of thumb is for every pound of meat you have, you put an egg. So if you had three pounds of meat, you'd use three eggs. My Aunt Marsha always said that, like when she made the best meatballs, and when I had her recipe and it said, she has, I have it written on there, for every pound of meat, one egg. So um, we're going to put two eggs in here because I barely have probably two pounds of meat here. This is how easy this is. Um, I don't measure anything. So I put Worcestershire and I just kind of go around the meat with it. Can't screw it up. Put a big glob of ketchup in it. Good enough. And see this little, this little chopper I got. I always put my onions in a little chopper and I got this one at a rummage sale for a dollar. And it works like a little charm. So look at how these are beat up. I don't like a lot of onion in my meatloaf because I think it like tastes like onion if you put too much and uh, I don't know. I just like it with a little bit of onion. And when it's ground up really nice, you don't have big chunks of onion. So I always put saltines in my meatloaf. And I probably use, I just crush them by hand. Nothing fancy. So if I had three pounds of meat, I would use three quarters of a sleeve of saltines. Which I'm going to use about half half of that so that's it that's all I put in my meatloaf no when my daughter makes it she adds garlic and she puts like colored peppers in hers and half turkey I mean you can make it with beef and turkey or chicken you know anything you want you could make it healthier if you didn't use ground chuck but Dean likes it out of beef so that's how I make it so we're just gonna mix this Nothing hard about this. When I first got married, every time I said I was going to make meatloaf, Dean was like, ugh. And then he would like eat half of it. And I'm like, well, I thought you didn't like it. And the kids always heard him, you know, say, ugh, I don't like meatloaf, you know. And I remember one, one day I was talking to the UPS man at work and I'm like, yeah, I was telling, telling the kids, you know, we're having meatloaf for dinner. And my son, Corey, started to cry. And I told him, I told him, I said, I make a good meatloaf. I don't know why he was crying. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that. I think he likes meatloaf now, though. No, you don't want to go crazy mixing this because it can get tough. Um, just get it so it's well incorporated. There, look at how nice. Ooh, we're going to have meatloaf sandwiches all week. Do you ever have a grilled meatloaf sandwich? Yeah, like a grilled cheese, but there's meatloaf in it. That's like the best sandwich you'll ever eat. <sighs> all right, when we come back, I'm going to find my meatloaf pan, and I'm going to show you what kind of pan I put this in and how I cook it. 
So I got out my trusty meatloaf pan and I actually got this pan from my grandma. So I think of her every time I make meatloaf. But um, so what I do is I first of all, I put a little bit of water in the bottom. Just a little bit. And I put my meatloaf in here and I put I put a hole in the middle of it. So it's like a ring. Um, you can cook it like in one big round thing if you want, but it cooks probably faster if you have it with a little hole in the middle. So you just kind of form it. This one I don't have eggs in. I did make one um, with leftover Easter eggs if you saw that one. Um, at, on TV6. That was fun. So check it out. Look at how nice. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cook this for 40 minutes on 350 and then I'm going to drain the grease from it. And I think that's one reason why I've tasted a lot of meatloaf that I didn't like um, because it actually boiled in its own grease which I think is disgusting. But um, I, after 40 minutes, I'm going to drain it and then I'm going to dump a can of tomato sauce over it. And I'm not going to put cheese on it or ketchup or anything like a lot of people do. And if you do that, that's fine. Um, you know, everybody does something different with their meatloaf. But this is the way I've been making mine oh, for 30 years. Oh my God, am I that old? Hello! <laughs> So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's all done cooking and I'm going to put two red potatoes in the oven for Dean and I. I always have baked potato and when that tomato sauce cooks, after you drain your grease, you put your tomato sauce on, it makes the best gravy for your potato and you can even add a little dollop of that yogurt on there. It's <laughs> so good. So um I'll catch you in a little while. I have to go to yoga, so guess what? I have to tell my husband that he has to drain this meatloaf and put tomato sauce on it. Uh, hello, doctor. I don't know if he can handle it, but I guess if he wants to eat dinner tonight, he better. <laughs> so I'll see you later, and I'll be really relaxed because I'll just be getting back from yoga. So. So I just got back from yoga and you know how I told you I was going to have Dean do the grease, drain it, put the tomato sauce on. So let's see what he did. Check it out. I got him behind the camera, by the way. Check out all the grease that came out of that. Are you kidding me? So if you didn't drain that, your, your meatloaf would be boiling in that grease, which not, wouldn't be very good. Now let's see how he did here. <laughs> What did I tell you? He eats half of the meatloaf, even though he hates it. You know what I'm saying? It's because it looks like a cake. <laughs> oh, well, you did really good, honey. God, I should have you cook more often. Oh, check this out. That is a nice looking meatloaf, don't you think? So do you want me to make you ice cream tonight? That would be nice. And the ninja, he can literally make ice cream in four minutes. <laughs> so, check out this gravy I told you about. When you put your tomato sauce over this meatloaf, and I always like put it in the skins of my potatoes, because the skin of your potato has tons of vitamins. Oh my God, it looks so good. Was it good, Dean? Yes, it was very good. <laughs> Remember when Corey cried when I said I was making meatloaf? <laughs> I taught him that. I know. Mmm, that's so good. Okay? And if you think you can't do this meatloaf, you saw how easy it was. It took me five minutes to put it together. And I wanted to tell you, you cook it 40 minutes, drain the grease, and cook it another about 35 minutes. So all that nice tomato sauce goes into the meat. And this makes the best sandwiches. That's what you're having for the rest of the week, honey. Sounds good to me. So, if I hear you say you can't do it, well, doubt it. Because even Dean could do part of the steps. So, till next time, keep smiling. 
See ya.